Okay, so um, the end of unit 20 has three random things. Um, um, the verb came I, mm -hmm. um, the second declension contract noun, noose, beautiful word, <laughs> lots of powerful things about it, means mind, and all kinds of other interesting things. And then the third declension noun, you stem, but we haven't had uh, the type us to. So we're going to go through these carefully one by one. Kmi is an interesting word. It's an athematic middle only verb. And most of the forms are based on the stem with the vowel e, i, k. But there are a couple forms, the subjunctive and the optative, that have the short vowel form k. The meaning of this word is to lie or be placed in a place. I, I, what I learned was that it was the passive of the verb tithing. So tithing means to put a place, and kmi means to be placed somewhere or to lie somewhere. Um, it's it's a uh, it mean it can in in poetry it means to be lied at, to be to be to be placed it's it's something beautiful that gets placed someplace. Mm -hmm. So a chameleon, for example, which is derived from that means a treasure, something that's put in a special place. Anyway, so the these it's an athematic middle. These forms are the easiest middles of all because they don't exhibit contraction. Um, so we've got k my k psi, no contraction in the second person singular form, k time. k with a k psi, k time, what could be more lovely than that? Um, you got you can see the ei suffix in the imperative, k so, k so in the singular, k the k so in the plural. But in the subjunctive, and also in the optative, you have ke, ke o my, ke a, ke a tai, no contraction, ke o metha, ke a the ke o tai. These are these are no contraction because there's a morpheme boundary. If you contracted the e with the omai, oh you would lose the root. You just have a kappa. So no Greek word just begins has a root consisting of a consonant. Mm -hmm. Right? You can have an H. <laughs> I guess, but okay, it's too little. Um, <laughs> then there's the participle k manos, k mene k manon and the infinitive case line. Again, these forms are very straightforward and simple, um, and it's a very common word in the language, and it's important that they teach it to you. Okay. So the last two items are the inflection of two nouns, which are not that difficult, um, and which also typify small classes. The, the first is a contract noun of the second declension. Noose. There are also contract adjectives of this type, like argurus, the word for silver. Um, but contractions are not that difficult. Most of the time, this noun, which is an important noun in Greek uh, poetry and philosophy, means mind or intent. has very interesting origins. Um, most of the time it occurs in the singular. So, nous, nu, no, noon. It comes from naos, nau, nao, naon. And nu is just not eh, okay? You may remember the contraction rules from the epsilon or the omicron contract rules, no, verb, no, verbs rather, okay. of the type de la o. Okay, the plural noi, no, nois, and nous, police and I don't ever remember seeing them, but I bet they occur. Um, they're again not difficult uh, in terms of, but you, you've got contraction, you've got circumflexes. The endings in the plural there are the same as the endings in the in the uncontracted form of the second declension nouns, except they have circumflexes, right? Mm -hmm. Singular is a, is um, different only in the in the nominative and the accusative, where instead of having a, os and on, you've got us and un. Okay, so I don't think these are that difficult to recognize. It's good to know about them. Mm -hmm. Astu is a an archaic type. We had we've had eustem adjectives in the past couple of lessons of the type. Um, rus and polus. Okay, here we're going to get a use stem noun, a neuter noun. There aren't that many of these in Greek anymore. Um, but it's a lot, the inflection, if you look at it, astu, asteos, aste, astu, looks a lot like the inflection of polis. Notice that the accent of asteos is on the first syllable. It seems to break the accent rule about, uh, about um, accent being. Uh, um, uh, re going forward when the last syllable is long, but it's because it once was asteos, and then 
um, with an Omicron. In the, with, an, with an Omicron and Veda, and the same is true of the genitive plural, osteon. So it's, it's a lot like polis, where what you have in the genitive and the dative is also a missing W. The U turned into a W between vowels, so it went away, and then you have contraction. So what's, that's why I have aste um, and osteon and osteos. Um, the the no nominative and accusative plural are aste from astewa once, and then they became contracted to aste. I think that you can recognize these forms. Again, I wouldn't put a huge amount of effort into learning them, but to become familiar with them. So they're not going to throw you. This word, by the way, means the center of a city. The book tells you it means a town. But for example, in Athens, the ostu is the Acropolis. Hmm. Okay, It may be a, a, a town because the a town doesn't have anything else than a central part. <laughs> okay? It's small enough. I think that's what's going on there. <laughs>